Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to a video that uh, is stressful but also feels great at the same time. Um, so y'all know around here I keep things like 95% positive. It's not that I'm not honest about how I feel about books, but the books that I don't love, I don't usually spend a lot of time on them unless they do something that really pisses me off and we do definitely have books that have done that on this list. Um, but for the most part, they're like books that I DNF. There's a lot of times that I, I don't pick up books that I think there is a possibility I won't like. And sometimes that keeps me from reading some really great books and sometimes that saves me from a lot of rants. Um, out of the almost 700 books that I've read this year, <laughs> only 19 of them did I DNF and only, let's see, where is this? Only about, I think 13 of them that I gave uh, two, two and a half stars. I do have a couple three star books on this list because books that I read for review that I get an arc for, I don't tend to give them less than three stars just because I don't like being a bitch, okay? Particularly if it's for an independent author. If it's for a traditionally published book, sometimes I'm just like, well, I'm going to be honest, right? So anyway, the way this is going to work, okay, is I'm going to quickly list all the books that I DNF'd, maybe say one or two words or a sentence because do I really ever just say one or two words about something eh, about what made me DNF it? Not all of these DNFs are books that I would never pick up again. And in fact, you are welcome to the books that are on the DNF list. You are welcome to suggest like, hey, you know, I think you should try this one again or do whatever. And maybe that will be a video some other time um, because there are different reasons for why. And I mean, you'll be able to tell based on how little or much I say about it if I'm open to a reread of it or not. Um, but we'll see. And then once I get through those, which like I said, I'm pretty much just going to list them and say one or two things. Then I have the books that I did finish them and I rated them two, two and a half. And again, a couple of them are three star books. I don't always see three star books as being bad. I want to be very clear. I rate quite a few books of three, three, three and a half star. And it doesn't mean that I disliked them at all. But in this case, again, there's some of them that got three stars because I was reviewing them. And so I was a bit nicer than normal. But let's go ahead and get started because I know for sure there's a couple that I do have lots to say about. And also some of these, I don't even fully remember what they're about. I looked up a little bit about them when I was writing them down. But if I didn't, like, it would just have to deal with it. So here we go. So... We had Daddy's Little Angel by Mia Clark. This was book two in this Daddy's Little Angel situation. This was basically a, like a best friend's older brother who the brother was also like the guardian of her friend. Um, I didn't mind the first one, but when I looked, I realized I gave the first one only like three stars. And then I tried, you know, I was going to continue and I was just too bored. The, the Daddy King side of this was... Mm, not the kind that makes me comfortable. I have, I do enjoy Daddy King Click. I do. But I have kind of specific circumstances where I like it. And when, when it's too much of like D, 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 G, L, or L, G, or too much of like the babying side of it, it doesn't work for me. So I didn't have that one. Squall Line by Gwen McNamee. McNamee. I believe this is a great late pirate novel so which I thought was a very interesting setup since I grew up near the Great Lakes um, and this is one that I couldn't tell you why I didn't keep going with it but I DNF this one so maybe would be open to more of this one Hot and Badgered by Shelley Lawrenston so I actually still own this one I don't think I got rid of it yet um, this was just one where like I didn't feel like the romance was getting anywhere this is I guess Badger Shifter and um Another kind of shifter is in it too. I know a lot of people love this series. This is one that I just didn't feel the romance going. And when I skimmed it, I wasn't seeing a lot of spice happening either. So I'd be interested to know why I should try this one again. Or if there's one in the series you feel it might be better for me to start. Because 
I had heard friends who really love shifter romances like this one and I just I know these ones got recovers this year I still have the original cover I think I could have passed it on because yeah I don't usually keep them sir by NR Walker I've read a few of NR Walker they are um, right kind of exclusively uh, gay romance this one it was too kinky for me um, so this one has like master slave dynamics or master little boy dynamics and there is a uh, dominant a sir who has kind of a full-time partner but he's 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 kind of like fostering another submissive <laughs> um, who was abused by their dom and it, it was too much of a regimented BDSM I, I I'm also not a huge fan of full-time dynamics in my romances like I've read here and now then and there where they work but this one was like a full scale like your whole day is planned out um, kind of I don't want to call it, there's no king shaming it's not king shaming it's just I don't find pleasure out of that where someone is like so submissive that they need someone to plan their like whole day for them because for me that's not so much BDSM as healing as like it's a crutch in a way when I'm reading it not calling that in real life because this is a safe place here but for my enjoyment level wasn't working. Dominion by Arabella Abing. This was an MMF and I was bored with it. That's literally what I have written down. Didn't work. This is War by Kennedy Fox. I uh, try again and again with Kennedy Fox. This is a writing duo and I like their cowboy series, which I've read two books of, but they have a lot of books that are like duets together and I'm not a fan of those. Like I've said it many, many times. I'm not a fan of duets where like that's just how an author writes every time they write duets because it, you can only make so much progression in the characters in the first book if you're going to have a second one about them. And so there ends up being a lot of miscommunications that don't need to be there. Now for this one specifically, um, it's that there's so much hate between them. That's like an irrational thing. This is a brother's best friend and then a forced proximity and they end up rooming like living together and there was just too much hate and when there's that much hate especially irrational hate then it's like I'm not gonna believe it when you start fucking each other it's not gonna work for me the mistress of Pemberley by Delaney Jane I was very interested to read this this is an erotic Pride and Prejudice retelling and I've heard a lot well not a lot I'd heard a couple good things about this one it was again too aggressively kinky for me uh, uh, I made it a little ways in and like Darcy was just too much of a dom like I personally believe that if we were looking at BDSM with um Darcy like he would be a soft dom in my opinion like not that level part but that's just my opinion like Mr. Rochester he would be a hard dom but and I know that's not Jane Austen that's someone else but for me it just was not working and it was perverting some things that I liked a little too well as they are Castles by Julie Garwood. This was one that I got 65% into this book. I mm. was very excited for it. Castles came out the year I was born. I was trying to read a few books from um, the year of my birth and I liked Julie Garwood. I've liked others and this had a really interesting setup. I believe she was a, like a Russian princess on the run or something and then they end up in like a marriage of convenience and the hero is a gaslighter. He gaslights her. I, I'm not going to take the time to get into it, but I was having a good time and then they got married and he was so controlling and gaslighting and like she has a goal she's trying to get to and she just folds under him repeatedly. And I was like, mm, nah, 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 wasn't working. How to Train Your Earl by Amelia Gray. This is one that I had an arc for and I actually like stop it it was just I had a lot of trouble with historicals that came out this year being bored by them them having too much of an agenda or just not really liking the story and this was one of them there wasn't anything um offensive about it or aggressively not working it was just bored the insiders by Tijin I'm just not a fan of Tijin this was more YA than I was wanting out of it and I was bored I'm also not a huge fan of Tijin's uh writing style I've read two books by her and I've tried another and I'm just it's not working for me cocky chef by JD Hawkins I just got bored with this the hero was too much of a jackass he's a boss and he's didn't like him stay with me by Nicole Fiorina yeah I know this is a big one this was too angsty and it felt really young adult and I 
just didn't like the setup of it. I don't like casual drug use for young people. I'm sorry. I just don't like reading it. Um, it's, that's kind of a trigger for me. Um, and I don't, I don't like books that are too much about mental health. Um, so there was just a lot with this one. And there was also a lot of pressure to like this one. And I think that was ultimately the demise because I don't like being boxed into a corner with anything because <laughs> I'm kind of picky with that. So this was a DNF. I think I made it about a hundred pages into, and I was like, nope. Office Hate by Rachel Van Dyken. I don't think I even read that much of this one. I think I even still have it on my Kindle. Didn't work. Baby in the Late Night Howlers by Catherine Moon. I don't like Omegaverse. I've tried quite a few at this point. I've tried four. And I know that's a bold statement to make, but I don't really love it. Um, yeah, I just don't like the setup of Omegaverse. It doesn't work for me. Um, even though I love, like, I love Catherine Moon's Lady of Rooks Grave Manor, which isn't an Omegaverse, but there is, like, MMF situations in it and but this one didn't work for me burn by suzanne wright i just got a little bored with it um she does do some pretty repetitive storylines from what i'm noticing among her series and i may try this one again i definitely will read more suzanne wright because i like her but this one wasn't working for me um pretty little mess by carmel rhodes this was the one where I could not make myself finish it or I would have done a bigger rant about it. But this is the one where he is her employer. She's supposed to be his new assistant. I'm an assistant. Okay, that's what I do. I'm an executive assistant. And this guy, he runs into her in the uh, elevator before she finds out that she's going to be his assistant. And because she had been like in the subway or whatever, she stepped in a puddle that had like urine in it. So she smells a little like urine. Um, also, she's a black woman. Also, this is written by a black woman. So I just, I don't understand. But his nickname for his executive assistant is Piss Girl because he'd smelled urine on her. And he calls her that in the workplace. And I was like, I don't care what kind of fucking billionaire you are. I'd be making bank off of that asshole if he was calling me Piss Girl. And then when they decide to have like a fuck with benefit situation, they are fucking and he's calling her, I'm giving it to you, Piss Girl. Like fucking her and she's like can you come up with a different nickname that's kind of a deal breaker for me and he's like no I won't be changing that this book has such high ratings guys I don't even fucking know DNF portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore this uh disappointed me because number one I just haven't worked with these traditionally published like the cartoon cover historical romances I've read one of Evie's before I didn't like it but I wanted to try this one and there was some sex in here but the only penetrative sex in the book was fade to black. They were all fade to black. And nothing will infuriate me more than I'm a fucking adult. Show me the fucking. And plus the heroin was driving me crazy. So DNF. And then the last one I DNF'd was Overruled by Emma Chase. <laughs> Which is funny because I loved book two and three and the novella. But this one is the first book in the oh in the uh in this legal brief series and it has a setup of like the they are friends with benefits who also work together and then he has a daughter with his high school sweetheart and his high school sweetheart who he hasn't been with in a long time but they used to be fuck buddies still and they have like a 10 year old daughter i think his high school sweetheart is gonna get married and he decides to crash her wedding not the wet but like crash that to stop it from happening but not to propose marriage to her to just keep her not married to someone else and he brings his fuck buddy with and it's their romance together no i was so mad i was so mad and it's a bummer because i liked this couple in future books because you know they show up in their friends books but no no Okay, so those are all the books that I DNF. See, it's not that many out of 700 that I've read. Now we're going to go through the ones that I gave low ratings. And again, some of these I'll talk more about than others. Some of them I have things to rant about. The first one that I gave two stars was Sorka Black, her book Cruel Idols. This was an MMF, um, a famous writer, and then this woman who ends up at his estate and he like kidnaps her because he thinks she's a stalker. Um... And she ends up like agreeing to do some kinky play with him and his partner because they're both bisexual. And there was pet play in here. 
and it was very degrading pet play like keep you in a cage on the floor and like eat your own vomit and even consensually I just I can't and again no kink shaming but I can do it NYX by Serena Ackroyd. Oh, yeah, I get this two stars. I hate it so much, and I know some people, I know some people forgive NYX, but I don't. I am a Filthy Feckers lover. There's a book in the Filthy Feckers that is about NYX's ex-club whore, whose name is Camille, and I read about NYX through Camille's point of view first. And so then when I went to start the bikers, because the biker books do, you can read them interspersed between the filthy feckers there's this grand reading order that you can do and I didn't like it I also am not a huge fan of this series because there are so many interconnecting POVs it's one of my least favorite things that Serena Ackroyd does is having so many POVs because it doesn't feel like it is one couple's romance and particularly in this one I hate Nix I hate him I hate how he treats women I don't like the biker uh way that the bikers live in these ones and it just doesn't work for me they do some great things they take out um people who hurt children i don't want to say the word on my channel and they do good things but there's too much of the the biker ecosystem that doesn't work for me so mm, no uh a beauty dark and deadly by heather mm, i can't print i don't know what it moyer meyer i don't know this was one that i got for free and I thought it was going to be great. I thought it was going to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't know what this book was. It was strange. That's all I have to say. It's been a while since I read it. But it didn't feel like the ending was very ambiguous and left me to wonder if there would be an HEA. Like they were together, but something that they do that happens, I'm like, okay, well, are they going to get to stay together because of this thing? And I don't know and I do not and there's no next book it's just like a kind of cliffhanger ending even though again it's ambiguous I don't like that <laughs> blood of Eve by Pam Godwin I know some of my favorite authors on the, like I have favorites by these authors also on my least favorite so this I have a pretty like infamous rant about blood of Eve so this is the second book in the Eve trilogy and it does something that is not a romance in this book and I can't tell you and like these were actually Pam's like first books and she had a very hard time marketing them um they are like post-apocalyptic Eve is the last woman on earth and this is also a reverse harem as well which um we don't see a ton of those aspects in it and also Pretty much any woman, because it starts where she's the only woman, like pretty much any woman who is alive there is like, it's going to be a reverse harem because there's only a, a couple women at all. Um, but anyway, she does some things that break romance rules for me. And like, that's okay as an author because she wasn't purposely writing these to write romance. She was writing these books actually to vicariously experience some of her worst fears. It's very cool. She actually talks about it in an interview on my channel, which is awesome. But I still hated it. Like, I can love her as a person and love her as an author and still hate this with a fiery passion. When this book finished, I did not believe what was happening. I messaged my friend Tiffany sobbing. I sobbed to her and I was like, what the fuck was this? So, mm, two stars. The Lady and the Orc by Finley Fenn, I gave two stars. This one, okay, this one, technically, technically, I DNF this one at like 90%, but I still rated it because I hated this. The hero makes horrible choices. The heroine is not really likable at all. There are copious amounts of semen used and it was sexy in some ways, but it was so frustrating because I know the miscommunications have to do with the fact that they're like different species. And so like, that's a thing, but there's only so much that my heart can handle and that I can take. And this just, it did not work for me. Siren by Marada Eros. I gave this one two stars. There was so much like casual assault there was too many characters this was really short there was just so many creatures and things going on i was just really confused gave it two stars um then i have lost boy by m robinson i read this one for a reading vlog and this book it just it had so much going on it starts when they're children and then it ends you know when they're like adults but like they aren't together for most of the book 
Um, it wasn't that romantic to me. And yeah, I just really hated it. Really hated it. Okay, so I have some three stars now, and then I will end with the most recent one I read, which is a two star, but I'm going to do these other ones first. John Eyre by Mimi Matthews. I read an arc of this book. This is one I gave three stars. This is a gender swapped retelling of Jane Eyre. That's why it's John Eyre. It's really more about Bertha, um, and it's also mixed with another classic, which I like won't tell you I say it in my review of this book if you look it up on Goodreads um a lot of people say it on Goodreads too um it was categorized in romance on NetGalley that's why I asked for it I thought it would be interesting if like so it's gender swapped Jane Eyre but so then instead of it being Mr. Rochester it's Bertha like Bertha isn't the crazy someone locked in the attic she is the person with a um, child that needs a tutor and so John gets hired to be the tutor and there was a lot about this that I liked but there wasn't enough romance there wasn't any smut in this at all and it was more focused on stuff that was happening for Bertha than John and there's lots of letters that we were re because there's not Bertha's POV in the book it's John's but there's all these letters that she's written um, again like the other classic that it's also mixed with so this is in five for me it, again this one was probably more two stars but i rated it three because i had a review lines and lace by megan mckinney this was one this was just hard for me this hero was so angry and bitter the whole time like he was so like even once the heroine has apologized for how things have been and the things that are going on he still is literally angry until almost the last page and then a couple pages of the epilogue, he is better. Um, so I was really sad. This was a golden age, um, not golden age. It takes place in America and our hero is Irish. Um, and he's a wealthy man and he basically like blackmails our heroine into marrying him. And she has a sister who's in an insane asylum that she's trying to take care of. So I will probably read the next book in this series because it is. It's actually about the sister who, spoiler alert, is not crazy. It's great. The Duke Goes Down by Sophie Jordan. Oh my god. This is another one that I gave two stars because I reviewed it, but I hated it so much. This, okay, we'll talk about this one real quick because it deserves it. So our heroine is a bitch. She's a bitch. So our hero, who is a, he's in, is he a Duke? Yeah, duh, it's called The Duke Goes Down. He's a Duke. But he was kind of mean to her as a kid. And I don't mean like horribly bullying or whatever. He kind of just like ignored her. And he maybe said if he said a few mean things about her behind her back that she overheard. And so she's hated him for all these years. She's the daughter of like a vicar. Um, and again, now he's an impoverished duke and he needs to marry an heiress. And she makes it her mission to make sure that he can't. Which number one is so selfish because guess what? A duke doesn't just need money for himself. He is a landowner. He is an employer. He's an important man. But our heroine, who literally is a vicar's daughter, who should know because a vicar, he usually makes money because the landowners around him, like whatever, wherever he is, they support him. So she should understand how important a duke's income is for his people, not just for him, okay? <sighs> and then, like, she said she spreads horrible rumors about him rumors that he has like venereal disease and that he like farts all the time and that he's just all these things that are so petty and childish and like again for the sin of i think like not saying she was pretty or something when they were children like i, I don't know about you but i've read some romances where the hero's done way worse things than that and like this heroine just tries to ruin his life basically like I don't know I I just feel like Sophie used the wrong this author used like either he should have done something worse and then have had like a rehabilitation that the heroine doesn't know about or the heroine needed to not take this so seriously like a venereal disease could be like a death sentence for someone back then and who they were having sex with so to spread that rumor about him is just honestly unforgivable in my opinion. Like, absolutely. And then once they, like, how they end up fucking each other, I could not tell you. I, I read it and I still don't know how it happened. So, ugh, hated that one. Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.M. Nakasta. I gave this one three stars. I did not hate this. I was pretty icked 
I was pretty icked. Now I've read snake romance and I've read spider romance. Okay. And the thing that icked me is that I grew up on a farm. I've seen a bull milking stand before. I've watched it happen. And then I saw the fan art of what he looked like. And there's a muzzle, like he has a, he has a snout. And so whenever like his moist breath came across, like, honestly, I've pet a moist nose of a cow and to have that down in my cooter. No, 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 no. Again, no king shaming snake, snake, snake and spider woman here. But I grew up with cows and bulls and the insemination process and the collection of semen before. And mm, it's not sexy to me in any way. Like he needed to be a different kind of monster. And then when I saw the fan art and he literally is just a minotaur who can like stand up, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Uh, Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. I gave this one three stars. Again, I did not hate this one. In fact, the hero is amazing, but the heroine, you can see a theme with some of these. She also just broke my heart and pissed me off. We have a Quaker heroine. We have a hero who I think is a Duke and he has a stroke. What seems to be a stroke in the beginning of this, actually when he's fighting a duel. And because he can't really speak well, he is very fuddled, um, words are mixed up in his mind, he ends up in an insane asylum, which is not treating him well. And the heroine, being a Quaker, she actually volunteers at this place and she is able to start communicating to him with math. It's very amazing. They're able to communicate. She's able to, you know, kind of help show that he's not crazy. And then for such and such reasons, they end up married. And I just felt very betrayed by her, by her not sticking by him in some moments when she really should have, which, yeah. But the hero in this book, oh my God, the journey of this hero, the way that Laura Kinsale is able to show in his POV what that stroke must have felt like and words he's trying to say and how they won't come out the way that he wants, like, mm, it's fantastic. But I could not forgive the heroine. And so this book left me feeling devastated when it was over because the way that she treated him, like I didn't want them to be together when it was done. I wanted him to just be like, fine, go back to your community and I'll find a different wife. Like that's what I wanted to happen. And then the last one, which I just read it this week. Like I had literally already made this list and I was ready to film this this weekend. And then I read this book and that is North of the Stars by Monica James. And yes, I gave this book two stars. This is a historical Viking romance that literally reads like a 1980s bodice ripper that is also a Viking romance. Like that's how frustrating it was to me. That's how little agency and control our heroine had. That's how much assault, um, rape, um, cheating, loss of a child, um, abuse. Like that's how much was in this book. Like literally this should have a Joanna Lindsay cover on it and say it's from 1980. That's how frustrating it was by this. Um, I have a full, like rant and spoiler review for this in my, in week 49, uh, weekly wrap up if you want it. But this book to me is a travesty that it has one of the prettiest covers I've seen this year, like not gonna lie. And there's also going to be two more books in this series. <sighs> I hated it so much. You guys, you can't even know. I kept reading it because I was pretty compelled by it, but this book was torture porn. This book was torture porn. Our heroine is raped in, we don't have, we're not, we don't sit there for every single one, but we're there for a lot of it. We know it's happened. She's been raped in every hole. She's had her legs broken. She's like I said, lost a child. Like this book was devastating to me. And I only hope that as more people read it and review it, that the rating goes down because you know how it is when people read the arcs, they rate it high. Like I even said, I rate books higher when I read the arcs of them. But I just don't know if people are reading the same book as me because this was not a romance. They're not even together for most of this book. Again, this book starts when she's 12. We see her when she's 12, 14 and 17. And the rapes, they start when she's 14. Yep. And I know it's a Viking. Like, 
I get it. But there's also that thing of like, you're writing the book and I'm okay with historical accuracy, but there's even a note. There's literally a note in the beginning of the book. Not a note that tells you what the trigger warnings are. Oh no, no. I had to stumble across all of those on my own and be like, I don't even fucking get triggered, but I was triggered by how many of the triggers and pet peeves that I have were in one book. Okay. Like I said, they're all in there. Like almost every single one that I have. The only thing that there wasn't was a pet death. And I won't be surprised if that happens in a later on one, okay? And anyway, this note, which didn't have the trigger warnings in it, said that like, well, I'm trying to follow history. This is historical fiction. It's historical romance. This is an angsty and dark romance. So don't, it, things won't be exactly perfect. And I'm like, well, then why didn't you fucking age her up then? Like, seriously, I don't want to read about child assault child rape okay I don't want to read about it in my books like no so if you're gonna change other things about the history which again is fine like I some people have a bigger problem I don't have a problem like I'm here for the romance anyway so I don't care if you change like how they talk or if you change that other people have more problems with that I don't but why didn't you age her up why 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 it's not that it would have made it better but it at least like wouldn't have had me thinking disgusting things so early on like anyway okay see I feels good to get this all out there these are my dnfs and lowest rated books of 2021 let me know if you agree with any of these again any of my dnfs feel free to let me know if you think maybe I should try those again because I would definitely will with some of the dnfs um obviously with these lower rated ones if you have a different opinion than me that's great. You're free to share it, but, uh, this is how I feel. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I'm going to go have a good stiff drink right now <laughs> and maybe some chocolate. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I'll have more end of the year content going up soon and I'll see you next time. Bye.